Covenant Church and all our viewers around the world, welcome to our midweek Bible study uh, in this series, this third week, we are dealing with the angelic beings in their hierarchy and we'll get to spiritual warfare issues in the presentation and so uh, get your notebook out, watch these again, uh, get people to tune into that, you can always go to our website and follow up on some of these issues. These are not uh, issues of milk. They are deep uh, issues. Uh, let's start our scripture reading with Psalm 91, a psalm that my pastor in 1978 encouraged me to go through. I do Psalm 91 just about every day. And uh, I was in the States a few weeks ago I did Psalm 91 for 30 minutes over and over again. And so Psalm 91 starts with, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my fortress, my refuge, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I will trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. There shall no terror that will come upon me by day, no arrow against me by night. No pestilence will come against me in darkness. No destruction will waste away at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, and they shall not come near me. Only with my eyes will I behold the reward of the wicked, because he has made the Lord my refuge, even the most high my habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Verse 11. For he has given his angels charge over me, to keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. And we can go on with reading that. And so this psalm is probably the most powerful of the psalms. The reason I know that is because when Lucifer came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness, the first thing he said, turn these stones into bread. Why did he say turn these stones into bread? Because Lucifer is a praise and worship leader. Stones are bread, which is revelation knowledge. A praise and worship leader has the privilege of a person's platform to lead in praise and worship. A praise and worship leader is not usually known for revelation knowledge. So what Lucifer wanted was access to revelation knowledge. If he, if he could get, get Jesus to turn stones into bread, because bread is knowledge, bread is food, it's feeding, then Lucifer could have said, as a praise and worship leader, I am now entitled to revelation knowledge. And so, of all the temptations, he used Psalm 91. He said, throw yourself off the temple. He said, because he, has it not been written, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And so, uh, from the fall of Adam to the coming of Jesus was 4,000 years. And Lucifer had 4,000 years to plan a temptation against Jesus. And of all the scriptures in the entire Old Testament, he chose that one. He chose that one. And so know this, that God has given his angels to keep us in all our ways. In every single way, the angels have charge over us. And so let's deal with now the hierarchical system of the angelic world. This is by review 
This is also for those that are tuning in for the first time. You can pick up this teaching. And so Isaiah said he saw the Lord high and lifted up in Isaiah chapter number 6. And his train flew to the temple. And uh, he witnessed there firsthand. Firsthand. There stood the seraphims. Each one six wings. Two they did fly. Two they covered their feet. Uh, and two they covered their eyes. And they cried one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And just by them saying that, the Bible says that uh, the, the, the posts of the doors in heaven were moved at the voice of the archangel of the seraphim. And so if you can imagine the loudest voice you ever heard magnified by a thousand times, like maybe even a million times. And so when lightning flashed across the sky and you hear the rolling thunder, the seraphim's voices are much, much louder than that. They shook the doors of the holy temple. The holy temple is what Moses was told and what David was told. Make sure you build everything according to the plan you see in the heavens. So the seraphim are on the top of God's chain of leadership. They are angels of light. The word seraphim comes from the Hebrew word seraph. S E R A P H. That word means to burn. It's a flame of fire. The Bible says he makes his ministers a flame of fire, talking about the seraphim. And uh, they are also beings of extreme light. And so when you have light, you have heat. Light and heat are synonymous, they are burning around the throne room in the presence of God. Below the seraphim come the cherubim. The cherubim is an angel with two wings. Below the cherubim are the stars of light. Stars of light. Below the stars of light are the thrones. Below the thrones are the dominions. Below the dominions are the virtues. Below the virtues are the powers. Below the powers are the archangels. Below the archangels are principalities. Below the principalities are ministering spirits. Below the ministering spirits are flames and chariots of fire, which Elisha, Elijah experienced, but Elisha said to Gehazi, Gehazi was freaking out, and Elisha said, just calm down. He said, Holy, he said, Lord, open his eyes, and they saw the chariots of fire in the hills. Those were angelic beings. And then there are the choirs and angels of heaven. And so when we sing that uh, Christmas carol, sing choirs of heaven, sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltations, those angels were first seen by the shepherds when Jesus was born. The angel of the Lord said to the shepherds, Behold to you this day in the city of David is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So the shepherds then went to Bethlehem and they saw Joseph and Mary with the baby in a manger. The angels were rejoicing and they were singing. I discovered in my study that in the heavens there are, t there are nine angelic choirs. Each choir has a hundred thousand voices. And if you multiply all of those, you now have almost one million voices that are constantly singing. 
and singing and singing. And then you have the rulers and authorities of light, where the devil then converts that into rulers of darkness of this world. You have then the rulers of spiritual holiness in very high places, which the devil has converted into spiritual wickedness in high places. And then we have familiar spirits, the corresponding uh, deal with familiar spirits are guardian angels. And then the last one is demonic spirits, which we'll spend some time with in this uh, presentation. So I'll go back to familiar spirits. Uh, when I was a boy, maybe 11 or 12 years old, barely that, uh, when I came back from boarding school, we came back from boarding school, uh, I was probably 9 or 10, uh, yeah, probably 9 or 10, we got to, my dad and mom were living in a town in Botswana called Mahalapi, it's still there. My mom was born in France, and my dad was working on the railways. And so when we got there, uh, so on, in that week, my dad had uh, a nyanga, a witch doctor, come to the house. And uh, they did a, did a ritual on us, uh, had a horse's tail, there was water there. They whipped us, made us drink some stuff, we got some cuts. And my dad was explaining to us that in his family, generations before that, two generations before him, there were so many of his family members that were dying in the month of February because of witchcraft unleashed in their lives. And so this is like a countermeasure. And then years later in my teenage years, my dad's younger brother took us to Hau Mine. We went to go and see a, a, a nyanga there uh, who did some rituals and stuff on us. And so, uh, of course, he was telling us of our lives for generations because, uh, the, and we were like, really? And what that was, was it was a spirit that knew, a familiar spirit that knew our generations. And so if there are uh, dark and evil spirits that know your generations, you must also know that they are powerful angelic beings that also know your generations. And so, when we're dealing now with the hierarchical system in the heavens, understand here well, that uh, the seraphim on the top are then second, are the cherubim. A cherubim is an angel with two wings. A cherubim is seen on the Ark of the Covenant whose wings touch each other. These angels are very, very powerful. They are warring angels. They are angels that uh, do and work God's command. They are very powerful, significant beings. And then we have the angels of light. These angels of light are responsible for all kinds of revelation, knowledge, and power, and strength, and uh, anointing. Thrones, we dealt with that last week. Dominions. Dominions are actually uh, areas of individuals that have influence. And so a dominion then, basically, so when we sing, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, that is around a dominion. A dominion is similar to a king's domain. So you have a kingdom. A dominion is around a kingdom. And so sometimes when I go to Nigeria and uh, even when I go to Ghana, I will meet several kings. Many years ago at our conference, we had King Cardi from Cape Town attend our conference. He is the king of the Khois in Cape Town. He is a kingdom. It is a dominion. Those kingdoms and dominions in the physical world are equal to kings and dominions in the spiritual world. And then there is a significant angelic group that are called 
virtues. These virtues, you know, there are seven virtues. And patience is not a virtue. These uh, angelic beings are responsible for what you can see behind me on the cross, which are like values in the kingdom of God. They are qualities in the kingdom of God. They are culturalists where uh, their, their principle, their principles are to build quality and substance in a person's life. A few weeks ago, when Pastor Chichi and I uh, were in Chicago, uh, there was a, a very elaborate Indian wedding. Very, very elaborate. And so the next morning when we came down to have breakfast, she went to the ladies' bathroom. And uh, in the ladies' bathroom, there was a massive diamond earring that was in the bathroom. So she picked it up. I was standing waiting for the reception desk. And she said to the lady at the reception, I found this huge diamond earring in the bathroom. Please, can you make sure that the person gets it? You know, that action blessed me so much, it brought me to tears because Pastor Shishi could have put that diamond earring in her pocket. Nobody would have known. I was so blessed. And I then realized even more so what a virtuous woman Pastor Chichi is. The woman at the reception desk was like blown away. She said, you really doing that? And she said, you know what? I have heard of you guys, but today I am first witness that you people are literally, actually Christians. And so when you deal with angelic beings that are responsible for virtues, they will add value to your life. They will add quality to your life. They will add tremendous blessing in your life. And so you have to then, the Bible says, in James, uh, you must possess by patience your, your life. Let patience have a perfect work. And so the angels that are responsible for virtues are going to build your lives absolutely significantly. So let me spend a little bit of time now with, uh, we, we talked in brief about dominions, kingdoms. Let me talk about powers. Powers. The Bible says all Power belongs to God. And so in God's cabinet, he has leaders of what is called powers. These are warring angels. They are two-winged angels. They take territory. They take territory. They fight. They take territory. Our responsibility is to keep that territory and maintain that territory. And so we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. And so in the heavens, the angelic being, beings of powers, they are the ones that govern, they govern the airwaves in the heavens. Uh, about 1988, one night in Hillside, I was awakened and I said to Pastor Chichi, I said, something's gonna happen in Africa because we, we felt uh, angelic beings moving, moving. And uh, a few days later, there was a huge, huge uprising in Ethiopia, huge. Uh, King Haile Selassie was assassinated. Uh, Mengistu took over. There was so much brutality. But we got a preempting of that because there were like reinforcements moving very powerfully uh, into Ethiopia. Ethiopia is probably the only country that is mentioned in the book of Genesis that is still in existence today. The Bible says our Ethiopia, that Ethiopia will rise up and will be a blessing. And so these powers then are responsible for the generate, for the traffic of um, power, political power, financial power, economic power, and so on, in the heavens. And my first encounter with this was in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, in 1992. I was asked to go and preach there for the Jamaica Pentecostal Union. It was the largest meeting I'd ever preached to. That was the first time I asked the Lord to make me sick so that I could be taken out because 
It was like 10, 12,000 people. The place was rumbling. It was shaking. And so I was, oh, Lord, I can't handle this. Please make me sick. And so the Lord opened my eyes and said to me, you're fine. I've sent you here on assignment. You are here on an apostolic mission. You are here to release apostolic order. And so he said, I've sent my angels with you. He opened my eyes. The first angel that I saw was the prince of Ethiopia, dressed in such gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous garb, golden crown, and he did this to me like this. And then he said, I've sent you the prince over West Africa, which is Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana, was dressed in glorious purple, had a crown, and did this. And said, I sent you the prince of South Africa. He was dressed in a, a wonderful blue kind of color, an angel of peace, and did this. And the Lord said to me, I have sent an entourage of angels with you and gave me just an open eye to see them. And so these basic angels are angels of power. I was preaching in London, England, uh, at St. Michael's Cathedral for Mum Ferguson. And I had anointing on my life uh, in that season where I was fasting. Uh, it was like 14 days. And I was praying. I was doing, it was very, very cold in London. All I was doing was uh, soup and had a blanket. And the anointing was on me. I was praying 12 hours a day, 12 hours a day. And uh, in my prayers and so on, uh, this church is in Cricklewood, London, uh, next to Kilburn. I would catch bus number 14, and I was praying and praying. And at the end of that prayer and fasting, I went to a place in London called Shepherd's Bush. And I was doing my prayer walk there in Shepherd's Bush. And uh, I was in deep intercession, just tears coming down my eyes. And in the eighth hour of my prayer there, uh, accidentally I bumped into a man, just bumped him. And the man grabbed me. He said to me, Tudor, he said, there are many of us as angels here. We are with you. Keep you in intercession. God is using you to hemorrhage the power of the devil. I was like, really? Later on that week in the evening, uh, when I was praying, I was about to challenge the principality over London, and the Holy Spirit said to me, you have not been called to challenge this spirit. You are not being called. I have sent you here so that you can add intercession to multiply the hemorrhaging of the demonic world over the city of London. And I was then interacting with these significant spirits and powers. So the third night in Shepherd's Bush, I was preaching for Pastor C.P. Trout. And he, I spoke to him, incidentally, uh, last week we had a very long conversation. I was preaching for him. And so... When I got into the service, as I began to preach, uh, there was a young guy that began to manifest the devil. And he ran out of the church uh, into the toilet. I followed him. When I opened the door of the bathroom, his tongue was about this long. And he was green. And he was flickering like this. And the Lord said he has the spirit of a green serpent. And so when I cast that spirit out, the, 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 the tongue, the green thing, fell off his tongue like a glove. This guy is a pastor today in Shepherd's Bush. And so the angels there with me, that evening, after that thing came off, four women began to manifest demons. They were actually witches from London that were sent there to inhibit and curse that church. I mean, the power of God was so strong. The angel of the Lord said, rebuke them, rebuke them, rebuke them. They ran out of that place. It was so amazing. And so for me, I've been in so many 
wonderful and incredible scenarios with angelic forces and angelic beings. I was sharing with uh, one of our staff members, I used to be uh, a representative working with KLM. Uh, and so for me to qualify for certain things, I had to go to Dusseldorf in Germany. So when I got to Dusseldorf in Germany, uh, as I got off the plane, the minute I got off the plane, as I stepped off the jet bridge into there, I saw this massive demonic spirit. It was a grotesque thing. It looked like a bit of a dinosaur thing. And the Lord said, this is the gatekeeper of the city of Dusseldorf. This spirit knows you are here. It senses your anointing. It won't be able to touch you. It can't touch you, but it senses you are here. I have put a shield around you. You are invisible. My angels are around you. They are here to keep you in all your ways. And so I went into the hotel. I was so scared. It happened to be the, uh, the festival and carnival in Dusseldorf. And of course, in Germany, they drink a lot of beer and stuff like that. And there must have been about 100,000 people in the streets. They were dancing and singing. And I couldn't sleep that night because I could feel the Spirit looking for me, looking for looking for me. But the Lord has given us charge, given us angels charge in all our ways. And so these powers that I'm talking about, these powers, they take territory. They war. They don't see ground. Once it's taken, we as human beings, we have to hold that ground. And so, sisters and brothers, in this simple presentation this evening, in terms of angelic beings and powers, uh, an hierarchical system, know that you have angels that you can command in your life. I pray that God will bless you. I pray that God will keep you. I pray that the angels will keep you in all their ways. Father, bless now in the name of Jesus. Amen.